สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today is a very Very special episode. I'm doing something I've never done before. I am making a recipe from a Thai cookbook that was first published in 1952, and I've never even done this recipe before. So we're gonna do this together live, and we'll see how it turns out. So here's the story. This is why I'm doing this. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a Hot Thai Kitchen fan sent me a copy, literally like a photocopy, of an old Thai cookbook called Everyday Siamese Dishes. And this is how old this book is. It's still referring to Thai as Siamese. And for those of you who didn't know, Thailand used to be called Siam, and so Thai used to be Siamese. This particular copy is the third publishing, but the earliest date that I can find for this title was 1952. It's written by. s i p p a n s o n a k u n She's actually the granddaughter of King Rama the Fourth. So, just as a reference, we are right now. Our current king is King Rama the Tenth, and King Rama the Ninth just passed away um, in 2016. And what's even special? This literally brought me to tears when I opened this book. The photos were taken by King Rama the Ninth. There are only about three photos in here. But he shot them and he selected them. It's all sort of described in the introduction of the book. So it's such a special book. This is also the very first Thai cookbook written in the English language. And in the introduction, she talks about how there has there's no Thai cookbook written in English. And so in order to sort of teach foreigners about Thai cuisine, she wanted to write this book. Oh, this is such a gem! So thank you so much, Wan Wai, which is I hope I got your name right, um, who, who sent this to me. And so the recipe that I wanted to try today, I wanted to try something that one I haven't tried before, two is an ancient recipe that's sort of disappearing. You know, a recipe that's no longer made very often. So I am going with a dish called ma ho. So ma means horse, and ho means. I don't actually know what it means, but according to this book, it means galloping. So I think it's probably an old word that's no longer used. So galloping horses, and it's a little appetizer, um, but I've never made nor have I ever had it because it's not something easy to find. So let's do this together and see how it turns out. Okay, so let's take a look at the ingredient list first. So I've got here half a kilo of pork. It says lean and fat mixed. Unfortunately, the store didn't have any fat, uh, regular ground pork, so this is just lean ground pork. That's okay. I'll add extra lard. Um, caster sugar. Now, caster sugar nowadays means super fine granulated white sugar. I don't know if that is what she meant because caster sugar, the way we mean it today, probably didn't exist in Thailand. In either case, I'm going to defy this recipe a little bit and use palm sugar because I think the The flavor is really going to be good. A point of interest: it doesn't tell me how much caster sugar to use, so we're just going to have to guess. Rambutans, rambutans. I think that's a typo. Or oranges. So rambutan, in case you didn't know, is this red, hairy fruit. Absolutely delicious. I can't find fresh, so I'm going to use canned. Um, it's one of those fruits that can pretty well. I've also got some oranges. Well. In Thailand, oranges are closer to Mandarin oranges, so I've got these. It's calling for nam pla, written phonetically. So this was before nam pla was translated to fish sauce. So fish sauce right here. Three tablespoons of roasted peanuts, coarsely ground. I find it really interesting that it specifies how much pork, how much peanuts, and how much garlic, but not how much sugar and how much fish sauce. So. It's almost like the seasoning. That's your job to figure out, which kind of makes an assumption that you know what this is supposed to taste like. Um, all right, let's get started. The first thing to do is chop the pork fine, done, and then crush garlic and fry in about two to three tablespoons of lard. Let's get two to three tablespoons of lard in there. Normally in Thailand, I know when they say lard, it's actually lard that you render. From pork that you have, but since we have conveniently packaged lard, come to think of it, it probably doesn't have as good of a flavor because when you render pork fat, you fry the pork, you get some of the pork flavor in the lard as well. And lard actually used to be used a lot in Thailand for cooking. And then let's see what I'm supposed to do next. Add pork, peanuts, and seasoning, and that's it. <laughs> that's all it tells me to do. I love reading these old cookbooks, even English cookbooks. 
which you can find like 100 years old cookbooks and they give like no detail and they just kind of assume you're so you roughly know what you're supposed to do I'm gonna stop it there because I know that if it's actually brown, it'll be bitter. So golden, it smells really good. I'm going in with half a kilo of pork, which is a lot of pork. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of numpla in there since it doesn't tell me how much. Okay, so I'm just gonna cook this until the pork is all split up and not in big chunks. Okay. So now I'm going to add my castor sugar or palm sugar. Now I know, just based on what I know about this dish, that you have to add quite a bit of sugar in order for the filling to be sticky enough to roll into a ball. So it's going to be pretty sweet, but let's do it a little at a time. And then of course you want to cook up all the liquid here. Oh, and let's add the peanuts at this point as well, so we can better judge the consistency of this filling. See, I think it's interesting that they gave you measurements for everything except the seasoning because when I write recipe, the seasoning measurement is like the most important thing that you want to get right because it really affects the flavor profile, the flavor balance of the whole thing, right? Okay, so it's pretty dry right now. So I'm going to turn it off and just give it a taste to see where we're at flavor-wise. I know that when it's hot, the sugar will not hold this together, so we'll be able to judge the stickiness of it once it's cool, which is kind of an inconvenience, but... Definitely needs more fish sauce. It's pretty sweet already. I'm a little concerned whether it will sort of hold together when it's cool. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of sugar and hope for the best. All right, so I'm going to let this cool, and in the meantime, let's prep the basis for our Galloping horses. Assembly time. So here's the filling that's cooled down. It, it's not really holding together, but at the same time, the recipe doesn't indicate that it should hold together. So maybe it's not supposed to. Maybe back in the day, it didn't hold together. And the whole holding together thing is a modern thing. Um, I added a little more sugar to try to get it to be stickier, but it's not really working. This doesn't look like enough peanuts, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll go with it. It's pretty tasty though. It's sweet, a little salty, not bad. So now um, in terms of fruit, I also am going to add some pineapple because that's one that the kind of fruit that I see most people use nowadays if they make maho. It's saying in the recipe, cut each rambutan in two and remove the seeds. Well, the seeds are already gone because it's canned. So I'm just going to cut this in half. Hmm, maybe only one piece. This doesn't look like it's gonna work. See, I'm actually surprised it calls for rambutan because I imagine this dish being good with fruits that are sour, like orange and pineapple, but rambutans are generally, oh, this one's not gonna work, generally very sweet. Pat extra syrup from the rambutan. And rambutans, even the fresh ones, are very juicy. So even if you didn't use canned, I would imagine you'd have to still dry it off a little bit. So now the oranges are a little bit of an interesting thing. It is saying separate them according to their natural sections, which I did, cutting them open on the back and lay them flat on a serving dish, skin downward. So I think cutting them open in the back in half and then laying them open skin downward and then you get like a little, you know, base for your filling. <laughs> this is so cute. Um, and then it just says to fill each piece of fruit with the pork mixture and decorate tastefully, tastefully, my friends, so don't be tacky about this, um, with picked coriander leaves and chilies. Now it's pretty crumbly, so I'm gonna do my best to mush it together so that it kind of stays. Okay, that's kind of holding together. You know what this reminds me of, especially the pineapple, reminds me of Hawaiian pizza when you've got pork and fruit. Okay, now I really, really think it's important to get the pork really fine because otherwise it's the big pieces are really getting in the way. So I have filled all my little fruits and they do look super cute, don't they? Now I'm going to garnish tastefully with some chilies. Didn't specify which kind, so I'm going to add some Thai chilies because it could use a little spicy, I think. And picked coriander leaves. How cute is that? Okay. 
Making these reminds me so much of my catering days where you're making tiny little bites of everything. Which one to try? I really want to try the orange. Let's see how I can pick this up. Ah! Okay, so it does hold together. Oh, it's like a little orange taco. I'm so excited it worked! Mmm! Oh, that's good. Oh, at first I thought the pork is super sweet, but it really needed to be that sweet in order to not clash with the sweetness of the orange. Um, it would really work well if, if you've got an orange that's too sour and you don't want to eat it fresh, this is perfect. I'm really intrigued by the rambutan though. It's okay, I don't love it as much because it doesn't have the tartness to balance, which means I'm going to really love the pineapple. Mmm, 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 mmm. I mean, pine if you love Hawaiian pizza, like the pineapple ham combination, you're gonna really love that. And we all know pineapple and pork goes together really well. That was super fun. I hope you found that interesting. And I'm gonna give you a copy of the recipe as is, and I'll add my notes. You know, I was trying to think about, okay, who is the audience for this book? It might have been for foreigners living in Thailand because given the such a small amount of detail that she gives, it's as though she assumes the reader knows exactly what this should look like, should taste like, but they just need a little bit of guidance of how to make it. So maybe it was foreigners living in Thailand or I'm not sure. So the recipe will be on hotthaikitchen.com and if you make it, definitely send me a photo. I'd love to see it. If you've had this before, let me know if you like it. Or if you have your own recipe, you can share that with me as well. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Definitely subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.